So one thing that helps children sort of zero in on the right meaning, uh, the right potential meaning, has to do with the lexical constraints that they bring to this word mapping task. And so one of these lexical constraints is called the whole object assumption, which is exactly what it sounds like. It says, okay, when you hear a new word and you figure out that it, you know, which object the person is talking about, you assume that the new word refers to the entire object rather than some part of it or some other aspect of it. So when you see goblin and you see this thing that it's clear the speaker is talking about, or maybe you make a fast mapping and you figure out the speaker's talking about this, you think it refers to the entire object and not like the head or the, the stick or the feet or the fact that it's small or, you know, it's just the whole object. That's the whole object assumption. And children sort of start with that as a basic idea for what the meaning of a word is. And so if you're interested in more of this, you can watch the link space video excerpt right here, which talks in a little bit more detail about that. Another one is the mutual exclusivity assumption. Uh, and this is very useful because this means the child assumes a new word does not overlap in meaning with a known word. That is, children hate synonyms. Children hate true synonyms. And in fact, in general, adult languages are not real fond of true synonyms where a new word completely means the same thing as another word. And so children sort of take this uh, quite far and they just assume that a new word does not have the same meaning as a known word. And so this is how this mutual exclusivity, so two new meanings are mutually exclusive with each other. This can be used to overcome the whole object assumption, that idea that when you first hear a word, you map it to the entire object. So if you know that this thing right here is a cup, right? You've learned that this is called a cup, and someone says, oh, look, and it's clear that they're talking about this thing. You can see the handle, and you're like, well, I know you can't be talking about the whole object because I know the name of that whole thing is cup. So maybe, so then they take their next best guess as to what you could be talking about, maybe by exactly where you're looking or maybe if you're touching the handle, right? Something to focus their attention on the fact that handle must mean something besides the entire object. And so that's because they're using mutual exclusivity to say, well, I know a word for the entire object, that's cup, handle can't be that, so maybe it's some part of the cup like this. Again, if maybe the mother happens to be holding it or otherwise really focusing on that part of the cup. And again, if you're interested, you can watch an excerpt from this Ling Space video uh, to hear more about just how that works.